Unique Qualities of Christianity Chita Briand wrote a wonderful book entitled The Genius of Christianity. He stated that it had to deal with violent and non-violent enemies who came across as stubborn and holy opponents. On the Christian side, such as martyrs and apologists, defenders like St. Justin of Nablus in Palestine, to Chita Briand's mind, the worst enemies were the ones who mocked and ridiculed Christianity. Obviously, we Christians are not supposed nor allowed to use the same strategy of irony, although there could be much room for it. This article is an attempt at a quick response without claim to it being exhaustive or seamless. The Ten Commandments One finds a parallel, apparently, in chapter 125 of the Egyptian Book of the Dead. A first deviation from the Exodus and Deuteronomy texts is that the Egyptian states, I did not kill, I did not steal, as a self-administered compliment, whereas the commandments and prohibitions are in the imperative form, or the imperfect, and understood as imperative. You shall not kill, you shall not steal. More important than this difference is the following fact. The Ten Commandments did not need to be committed to paper, as they were written deep down in the hearts of the people. They are God's law, in the simplest and clearest sense of the law of nature, common to all humankind, engraved in all consciousness. Jesus Horus In a video entitled Origin of Religions, it is said that Oros, the Son God, is the background of the personality of Jesus. Oros, according to ancient Egyptian legends, represented daylight in constant struggle with Sith, who represented the darkness of night. Such combat went on a daily basis. For us Christians, Jesus is the light, the day, the sun that never sets. Well, there is no comparison with Horus and Sith as yet. Some figures, real or legendary, are said to be born of virgin on the 25th of December, such as Mithra, for whom Sunday was regarded as the holiday of the week. In this case, the virgin would be none other than the constellation, Virgo, whose stars are known as the House of Bread, Bethlehem, etymologically. The three kings, those who purportedly visited baby Jesus, would be none other than three stars of Cirrus in the Orion area, the twelve disciplines of Mithra, Jesus, would be none other than the twelve constellations, Jesus would be only representation of the constellation Piscis, of the fish, followed by Aquarius, some people think that Luke 22, 10, the man carrying a water jar on his head, leading the apostles to the cynical of the Last Supper, would be a hint about the astrological sign. Just to begin with this last point, some scholars concluded that the man was a sin to speak about the diversity of interpretations only, although that which leans towards the direction of the essence is far more plausible, not only because of the historic context of Jerusalem, but also because humanity was entirely unaware that the era of Christ, the Piscus fish, is over. The Virgin Birth What had been a dream and a legend in some parts of the pagan world, namely the birth from a virgin of a great personality who would save humankind or be a god, became a reality in Mary of Nazareth. That pagan dream has been well explained by the suffering of people and their awareness of sin and helplessness. In the Hellenic period, many a king would carry the title Soter, a saver. Although marriage was considered rightly a sacred bond, yet birth from a virgin was seen as the beginning of a new era of grace. For us Christians, not only does the Greek Septuagint translation of Isaiah 7.14 read Parthenos instead of Hebrew, Alma, young woman or girl, some two and a half centuries before Christ. 
But this virgin birth comes, according to the Catholic Church at least, after the Immaculate Conception, to mean that baby Mary has been spared from the original sin from the time she was in her mother's womb, after Anna had conceived from her husband Joachim. The Quran seems to give Mary's parents a different identity as Imran, Amiram, and no name for his wife. Conception within wedlock is sacred. Conception for a virgin is miraculous. It would also mean the beginning of a new cycle in history, since the old and normal one with its triple element of man, woman, child comprised as well the transmission of an ancestral sin or tendency towards evil, present even in children. Nativity on December 25th Neither the New Testament nor the Church Magisterium has ever claimed that Jesus was born the 25th of December. It's exactly other way around. As many pagans, Mithraeans, and Romans, among others, celebrated the Natalis Solis Invicti, the church, actually the one of Rome, cancelled, eliminated, and abolished the pagan feast by having it replaced with the memory of Jesus' birth. Jesus the Fish Nowhere do you find the New Testament any identification or definition of Jesus in connection with the fish. Yes, he did choose fishermen. He did multiply bread and fish, the main food elements in the improverged Galilee. Fish symbolism is extra-biblical and conventional. It was, apparently, a cryptogram, a secret sign for Christians under persecution. The acrostic Greek, I, chithis, a live fish, came to mean only for Christians and in a broad sense, not a scientific one, Jesus Christus Theo Ius Soter, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior. We do know that some church fathers familiar with the Hebrew language saw in Joshua, son of Nun, a perfiguration of Jesus, since Nun means fish, so it does in Arabic and in the explanation of Quranic text. So goes the patristic, not biblical idea, as Goshua, son of the fish, had the people of the old covenant cross the Jordan River to the Holy Land. So Jesus, the fish, makes us cross the Jordan River already by his own baptism there to heaven. The Twelve Disciples Some real or legendary figures might have had, in fact or according to legend, twelve disciples, but Jesus chose twelve because of the twelve tribes. On the other hand, the thirteenth disciple or apostle was far more important than most of them, except for Peter, namely the ex-Pharisee Saul Paul, so the whole comparison fails. Crucifixion and Resurrection on the Third Day one might see some parallels in the legends about Horus, Buddha, and someone else. But the reality was in Jesus. His crucifixion is attested to by pagan historians and philosophers, Tacitus, Pliny the Old, Cilicius, and by the Babylonian Talmud Serhindin 43a. One may say, in an understatement, that his resurrection is a fact, as so far his body has not been discovered. Christianity, a tyrant demanding absolute submission. This theory is completely unfounded. Christianity respects people's minds. St. Paul writes to the Romans about a logici latriae, a reasonable worship, or cult, in Rome 12.1. No death penalty is foreseen for a Christian who thinks and asks. Christianity does not separate human beings from each other. It recommends love for the neighbor and for the enemies, non-violence and constant forgiveness. A historic question. If Christianity were so pagan, why did pagans persecute it? Thank you. God bless you.